This is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs, and this is our live video chat coming to you from, like I said, Posh Pooch Designs. And today we, I have a table just full of fun things that are going on this week. And of course, I'm dressed in my St. Patrick's because it's almost St. Patrick's Day. Well, anyway, we're sort of celebrating St. Patrick's Day. And um, if you've got your coffee, clink in and let me know where you're from today. And also, I um, found this little Irish proverb that I want to read to you. Let me put my glasses on. <laughs> is that not kooky? All right, let me read you my Irish, Irish proverb. And this is for you, all the listeners on Facebook and on YouTube. May your troubles be less and your blessings be more. And nothing but happiness come through your door. That's my Irish proverb for you for the week. I'm going to take off these silly glasses now because they're just driving me crazy. <laughs> okay. Now we have a whole, like I said, I have a whole table full of fun things that are happening this week and in the, in the coming weeks at Posh Pooch Designs. One of them is this neat little hat that I'm wearing. This is my Lucky Shamrock hat. And it's really fun to make because it's made from the top down. You've got a couple of different striping here. And the shamrock itself is actually stitched in as you do your rows. And it makes it really fun and easy. Good morning, Linda. Clink in. Now, if you're just tuning in, I did a, an Irish proverb at the beginning of the video. So make sure you watch the beginning and get that Irish proverb. Now, we have a lot of things to talk about, and one of the questions that I, that I get often is, I made a crochet swatch, I used the same hook, the same yarn, but my item is not the same size. What do I do? Well, there's a lot of things that can affect your gauge. We're not going to talk about gauge today, but just a little bit. And there's a lot of things that can affect your gauge. If you're going through a troublesome time or you're watching a, a, a movie that is extremely intense, it can cause, good morning, Stacy, clink in. It can cause you to be uptight and stitch tighter. If you're listening to some nice, relaxed music, you might relax your gauge a little bit. And to be honest with you, I always make a swatch when I'm knitting. But to be honest with you, I rarely make a swatch when I'm crocheting unless I'm working on a new stitch that I'm learning. When I first began the crocodile stitch a few years ago, I did some swatches to practice. And there were some other different intricate stitches that I want to learn. I'll do some practice swatches. But the practice swatches that I do are not necessarily for gauge. They're just for learning that stitch. And so what I want to talk to you today about is don't panic if your gauge swatch doesn't match your item. And another thing is you may have made your gauge swatch one day and then a couple days later you're working on your project. So just to give you an idea, I'm gonna tell you the most important tool in your crochet bag is your measuring tape. I have these all over my house. Everywhere I sit, everywhere I have a crochet bag, Everywhere I crochet, even in the car, I have these 99 or 97 cents or a dollar. Walmart and Hobby Lobby and Michaels all have these inexpensive ones. My grandkids love playing with them. But this is one of the most important. Hello, Jen. Just saw you clinking. Snowy New York. I bet it is. See, we don't have any snow down here in Colorado except up in the mountains. But you guys are getting just blasted with snow. The truth is I'm a little bit jealous because I love this snow, but I know it's closing down a lot of stuff. So everybody up there needs to be careful. Anyway, your tape measure is one of your most important tools in your crochet bag. And the reason is, I mean, how many times have you made a hat and it says it fits this certain head or that certain 15 inches and counting? Sorry, that's a lot of snow. <laughs> 
you put your hat on <clears throat> or you gave it to whoever you made this hat for and it slides down to their nose or it only goes up to here. It's too small or it's too big. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about measuring. Here is a um, crochet corner to corner little square that I made. It measures about six inches. <clears throat> now I'm going to make a great big blanket, but I want to make sure it's going to fit my bed. So I'll measure it across. Okay, so it measures about six inches. Well, then I go and make the bed, <clears throat> the bed spread, and it doesn't fit right because when I made the swatch, I made it while I was watching a intense Star Wars movie or something, and then I sat down to make the blanket, and the and the little blocks aren't the same size. I used the same hook, I used the same yarn that the pattern called for, but it's not right. And so you need to measure as you go. And so, for instance. You know, you you're, measure your little blocks or measure as you, as you go. And if it's too small, you can always make it bigger. Learning to adjust and not be so set on stitch counts is the key to good measurement. Years and years ago, when I was 13 or 14, good morning, Judy. When I was learning to crochet, I didn't know anything about stitch counts. And the library book that I had checked out really talked a lot about measuring. And it was... The book that I did, good morning, Michelle, clink in. The book that I had that I had been reading that I did learn from talked mostly about measuring. And that's why I have it in my brain to measure everything. Because when I give somebody something, I want it to fit. Now, if it's a blanket <clears throat> or a throw or say a scarf and it's an inch too short or something, to me, that's not really a big deal. But you need to learn that it's okay if it's not an exact measurement. That's why you'll see on a lot of my patterns I put approximately, unless it needs to fit. Now that's a blanket or say a table runner, a pillow or something that doesn't have to fit. But if you're making blocks and you're putting them together in a pattern and you've got one block this, that's too, this much too big and this one that's too small, you're going to have to adjust a little bit. And that's where the measuring comes into it. You're going to have to adjust, add another row or add a, a less of a row and measure your rows as you go with your tape measure. Okay, so that's that's a flat project. And a lot of times, like I said, those aren't the ones that totally freak us out. The ones that freak us out are hats. Now, you can go online and you can find sheets and measurements on all of them. And every blog that you find are, is different when it comes to measurements. And, you know, I made a bunch of preemie hats for a hospital, and I ended up making them in several sizes, and it worked great, but I wasn't sure if the measurements were right because I had several different measurements. So at the time, I had a nephew that was in, um, had been born early and was in care. And anyway, good morning. This is Susie Francis Martinez. Thanks for checking in. And make sure you click. Clink, not click. <laughs> Clink in with your coffee or your tea or whatever you're drinking. But anyway, so I had her measure his head. And I, I was within um, what it was. But you're going to go online and you're going to look up circumference of a hat. And every one of them are going to be different. Because everybody's head is different. Some people have skinny heads and some people have fat heads like me. Some people have longer heads and some people have short. I'm, I'm short. I'm short and fat. Okay, so what you're going to need to do is when you're making a hat, if you're giving it as a gift that's a surprise, it makes it a little bit hard. But I, when I'm giving it for, to someone and I don't know their size exactly, I always go a little smaller because hats are stretchy. And the last thing you want is for that hat to slip down over their face. <laughs> and then they can't use it at all, or maybe they can roll it up. But what you need to do is you need to measure around the hat as you go. For instance, the top of this hat, you start in a circle and you measure out. And then you can measure to how far, and this has to do with your increase stitches, how far you want it to go. And then if you go by the person's hat, okay, it's 12 inches. So don't let your circle go any farther around than 12 inches. And then you can continue on with your pattern. Now, if your pattern is very intricate, you're going to have to do a little math. But most patterns out there are going to show you and tell you if it's several sizes. 
but if it doesn't, measure as you go. The other, you know, the circumference of the head. And the other thing is to measure the length, especially if you're going to add a little flower or something. You don't want it sitting down here, <laughs> you know, and, and, and to me, to me, measuring is one of the most important things that you can do with your projects. That's why I say your tape measure is your most important tool in your crochet bag. And these are so cheap. Get a bunch of them, stick them everywhere. Okay. So you're, so to measure hat, to get it to fit right, you're going to measure the circumference and you're going to measure the length because, you know, ju just, just as a reference, my head is the same size as my four-year-old granddaughter around but my head is short, and so and so. actually, we wear the same size hat. She's four, I'm 50-something. Anyway, so everybody's head is going to be a different size. And you can go by the charts that you get online, but you also need to remember that because, you know, my husband's head may be, you know, 24 inches around, but it may only be, you know, five or six inches long, and so you're going to have to adjust as you go. A lot of hats are made with, um, you know, owls and, and eyes and faces and all these fun things. Remember on those hats that those are made to sit up a little bit higher, more like a slouchy, because you don't want the hat coming down on their head, and you're going to have to push it back a little bit like this one, um, because this one's made for a longer head, and my head is short, and I want to wear it anyway, so it's a slouchy on me. Of course, I like slouchy hats because I like to put my hair up in a ponytail when I go and swim at the gym and I'll have my hair up and then I can throw a hat on and there's room up there for my ponytail. And sometimes I do wear my messy bun hats too. I like those too. Good morning, Brandy. Did I miss anybody? Make sure y'all click in and tell me where you're from. I love to hear where you're from. Okay, so to bottom line, what we're talking about here is making a, sw a gauge swatch and crochet is a good idea but just remember that just because you made a gauge swatch doesn't mean that you're going to do it that you're going to stitch those stitches even if you use the same crochet hook and the same yarn exactly like your gauge swatch or exactly like the person who designed the pattern good morning connie and remember every crochet designer has their own techniques and their own way there is a standard out there, but people like, like me, I have my own, my own techniques and my own designs and my own way of doing things. And it's not going to work for everybody. And so if you make, for instance, this hat that I'm wearing and you're like, has too many rows. Well, if it's too long, you can move your flower adjustment up and make less rows. If you need more rows to make it longer, you make more rows. Or if you wanted it longer, this these section here that has the the two tone make more of those patterns patterns are um there <laughs> messed up my hair do pattern designers um go by what they know for instance you know a lot if you have a young child and your young child's head measures 12 inches then in your mind most kids that are two maybe their head measures 12 inches but that's not always the case. And just because this child is a newborn doesn't mean it's not going to have a big head, you know. <laughs> Both of my babies were tiny, so I had little heads. But I have babysat for other people's children that had larger heads. And just like my granddaughter, I always tell her she has a big head because she's so, so smart. And there's so much information up there. And that's probably the truth. She is so, so smart. My other two grandkids are very smart as well. Uh, but they both have smaller heads and like my grandson Aiden who just turned nine in January His head is smaller than my four-year-old granddaughter So, you know, you just you just can't go by what the standards are now you can use those as a reference and that's a good idea I Made a lot of scooties this year turned out nice scooties are fantastic because um, scooties are loose hoods with the, with the scarf hooked on. And if the hat's too big, you can wrap that scarf around and make it fit good. <laughs> so any, anyway, like I say, your tape measure or your, or your ruler are, are your best tools in your crochet bag. Measure, measure, measure. It's, 
I kind of say, you know, when I get messages and they say, I made your hat and you say it fits 20 inches and I made it and it's too big and I'm mad and I don't know what to do. Can you help me? You know, and I always tell them, did you measure as you went along with the pattern? Because everybody's head is different. And not only is everybody's head different, but everybody crochets different. And I tend to be a loose hooker. We've talked about this in the past. I tend to be a loose hooker. I crochet loosely. My daughter tends to crochet a little bit tighter, which is so funny because when I knit, I am a knit, I am a tight knitter. And I don't know what the difference is, maybe because I'm using the two needles opposed to, to crocheting. Although crochet is my heart. I love crochet. And so that's what I'm, that's what our conversation or our talk is about today is the importance of measuring as you go. And just to repeat, you know, on your flatter things, you can add a row simply, easily, you know, table runners, placemats, blankets, you know, scarves, wraps. Those things are really, really easy to add and adjust things to. Hats are a little bit more difficult. And I have probably 10 different sites that I go to to get the circumference and the shape of the hat and the length. I mean, not the shape, the length of the hat just to kind of reference off of. But if I'm going to make something for somebody and they're around, I measure their head. And if it's for a child, I ask their parent just to give me a, a rough measurement. And when they do give me a rough measurement, I always subtract an inch because hats are stretchy and I don't, and I want them to fit. And that's kind of my rule of, I don't know, rule of thought maybe. But that's what I want to talk to you about. Measure, measure, measure. Your tape measure is the most important tool in your crochet bag. Okay, so, <clears throat> did you miss my uh, Irish blessing? Should I read my Irish blessing again? May your troubles be less and your blessings be more, and nothing but happiness come through your door. <laughs> All right, so what's going on this week at Posh Pooch Designs? Well, we have lots of fun stuff going on. My table is just loaded here with things. i got to move them around. Um, I had a request. Uh, can you see the pizza blanket back in the corner there that Maximo's sitting on over there? Well, that's a dog blanket, and I did a video on it and showed you how, to, how you can make it little and big. And I had someone ask me, well, can you just write out the pattern for the pillow? Because in the video, I, I make it smaller, and then I tell you that I'm going to make it into a pillow. So here's the pillow. And I put that out yesterday. It's so much fun. It's nice and squishy. Super, super duper easy and fun to make. And I thought, oh, this would make a good cheeseburger too. Maybe I should make a cheeseburger pillow. Maybe I will. <laughs> but anyway, that was out there. It's a free pattern yesterday that I put out there on my blog. Um, another thing that, uh, that we did. Oh, this one that I'm wearing. This is a dog collar that I made. You can make it long or short. And, uh, of course, I have some little ones here that I made. Super fun. It's just the, the clover dog collar. You can add as many clovers as you want, or just, I just put three on this one. And this one that I'm wearing, I've got, I think, five or six. So that's something that I, that's out there. That's a YouTube video. And then we did the um, coasters for your, for your cup. Just a cute little coaster. You can make these in uh, the acrylic, or you can make them in cotton. Here's two colors that I did. So, and does anyone know, I looked up today who St. Patrick was, and St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland, and I thought that was cool, he was a missionary to Ireland, and I thought that was kind of cool that he, that he was the patron saint, and then I thought, well, what's the significance of the three leaf and the four leaf clover, and so I found out that all shamrocks are clovers, but not all clovers are shamrocks. And, I, and it's kind of like all car, all Fords are cars, but not all cars are Fords. And the significance of the three clovers is the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And then the four-leaf clover is considered lucky. So I thought that was kind of cool, you know, just a little FYI, since it's St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so some Easter stuff that's coming up. This isn't Easter, but this is uh, my, my big fat striped bag. And I have it on my blog already, written out the pattern. And I made it uh, originally, um, oh my goodness, two or three years ago, with where you change colors every two or three rows and make it striped. 
Well, this week I picked this, uh, or last week I picked this pop up, and it's called Lipstick on Your Collar. Isn't that cool? And so I'm going to, this is going to be a video this week in the next couple of days, and I've got a polymer clay button on there, and in the video I'm going to show you how to make the Easy Easy bag and the flower. And it's a great project bag. It's nice and big, and it poop, pooch, pooches, <laughs> it pooches out so you can stuff a lot of stuff in it. Okay, that's coming. And then the Easter stuff I have coming is this Easter pouch. You can fill it with jelly beans or whatever you want. Nice little pouch. You can stick good stuff in there and stick it in an Easter basket. And then this chunky Easter basket is another one that we're going to do. Flower is similar to the one on the other bag. This is made with a chunky yarn, so it's nice and stiff. I've got some yarn in there to push it out a little bit because it doesn't have anything in it. But that's a fun little Easter basket. And I use that as a decoration, and I put some yarn balls in it. It looks like eggs are in it. Super cute. Okay, and then the last thing is my my bunny coasters. And <laughs> I was told they look like hamsters. So maybe I need to make the ears a little longer. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know what you think. <laughs> and so that's something else we've got coming up. We've got so much fun stuff happening and so much fun stuff going on. And I'm just really... Like I said before, I am just learning a lot of, of fun things and doing a lot of fun things. Some of the things that I put on uh, YouTube are patterns that I've done in the past, and then we just update them, retest them, and then make a video. And then some things um, are new, um, like our pizza pillow. <laughs> I just love this so much. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we have going on this week. And like, um, and like I said, one thing to remember from this video, if you didn't learn anything else from all my silliness, is that your tape measure is one of your most important tools in your crochet bag. Everyone have a wonderful week. Have a great St. Patrick's Day. And just a little note, next Tuesday is Maximo and Rose's, Rosie's birthday party my puppies so we're going to have some fun birthday patterns and then we're going to have a birthday party and just have some fun lighten up have some fun so like i said have a great saint patrick's day and it's a great week